but <laughs> hello, it's Vicky with my healthy beginning. And today we have Sarah Damlo, herbalist and homeopath with us. I thought this is a perfect time to ask some questions about the beautiful art of homeopathy and do some education. We get a lot of questions about it in the office because we use some homeopathy with our nutrition response testing. And sometimes I tell people need to go deeper uh, for, or they're not ready to do this work and I'm sending them on to getting them some education around homeopathy and how that will benefit their health is a great step to take. Um, so yeah. welcome. Thank you. Thanks I for joining. I think that, um, you know, when we're talking along those lines of using nutrients and supplements, We've found that through using homeopathy, it makes your body more available to accept those supplements and those vitamins. You know, we can take as much magnesium as we want, but if our body is not ready to utilize it, then it's just going to pass through us or not do its required or desired effect. So right. through stabilizing your body with homeopathy, you're more um, acceptable to whatever supplements, nutrients that you're going to be turning toward. <laughs> This yeah. is true. I've seen it myself, experienced it myself. Um, I should say right now, my entire family, minus the dog who was throwing up all day on Monday, <laughs> has been on SOS phone calls with Sarah for the last week. Um, but here's what I love. It's actually faster to have you handle my family um, when I'm at work than I can get them handled when I get home. So sure. I always yeah. really appreciate that support. Thank you. Um, nice now, to have those relationships. Yeah. yeah, really helpful. Why don't you give us a basic definition of what is homeopathy? Sure. Um, so homeopathy is a uh, form of healthcare or medicine or vitality. Any you know other words you want to use? It's been around for over two hundred years. It was established on the premise of like treats like, that homeopathy means similar treatment, similar passion, similar suffering, similar healing. And so when you're having symptoms, whether it's like a runny nose, you know, a lot of us are experiencing some cold symptoms right now. So a lot of runny nose, itchy eyes. Well, what's something in nature that will produce those symptoms? An onion, you know, cutting an onion. And so we have a remedy made from Allium Sipa, which treats those symptoms. You have those symptoms because of a cold, not because you're cutting an onion. And so when you use Allium Sipa to treat the nasal discharge, to treat the runny eyes, you feel relief because it's that matching that same level. And so then you can also, that's a good physical analogy. You can also go um, to mental and emotional components too, where you're matching that, um, maybe that dark black cloud that comes over your head. Well, there's a remedy state that has that. So we're matching anything, whether it's on the physical, mental, or emotional level, which, um, you know, it's all connected. We're all mm -hmm. holistic here. We're not separate. We're not just a runny nose. Maybe you have a runny nose and a little bit of depression. Well, that will lead you towards another remedy as well. So. So that's kind of like a, a big picture of what homeopathy is, but we use natural substances. We use plant, minerals, some animals, you know, like the bee, or there are some remedies made from snake venom. So we incorporate it all. Now, one thing I've had people say before, it, even if I've just recommended the a... I'm sorry, say again? So some people, if I've recommended to, hey, go across the street to the co-op and pick up chamomile for the teething baby or something, right? So, and they've maybe dabbled in a couple of their remedies and they notice that it's, they taste the same. Mm -hmm. So can you speak to what they're developed out of, you know, what is the that substance that they're tasting? Yeah, well, I'm... Um... I'm reading a fantastic book right now called Water Codes, and it's all talking about structured crystalline water. And so remedies go through a process of dilution and potentization or succussion mm -hmm. and um, 
energy, you know, raising the vibration of it. So what you do is you take that original substance where it's the onion or coffee bean or a little um, silica mineral, and you're diluting that down. You're taking a small component of it. And every time you're diluting it down, you're mixing it with water and succussing it. So you're pounding it, you're raising the energetics of it. And because water holds memory, it's creating that uh, memory of the substance in the water every time it's becoming more and more dilute. So that's, and then that final dilution with you're working at a 12 C level, a 30 C level, the difference between 12 and 30 is um, the lower the number, the more the physical presence is still left of the substance. When the higher the number, the higher energetics it is. So 30 is higher energetics than 12, 200 is higher energetics than 30, like that, but it's all gonna taste the same because once it's reached that level of potentization, it's placed on milk sugar pellets that are easily dissolvable, that you know, they're kind of sweet. So children, everybody likes taking them. Mm -hmm. And so are they a problem for somebody who has a dairy intolerance? Um, no, we haven't found that that interferes because it's such a minute amount. I know that dairy is a big um, concern for a lot of people, but the small amount that you're taking, it's more of the milk sugar. It's not the casein, you know, from the dairy. And then also if there is a really, really strong intolerance to dairy, you can get um, other like glucose type pellets. You can specifically order something mm. separate. But for the majority of the population, that small amount of milk sugar is not a problem. So I haven't really thought about that myself because people ask me that question, but I haven't uh, mapped that onto my family. And there are several of us who don't tolerate dairy. And yet right. we have fantastic results with homeopathy all yeah. the time. So, and it's not like okay. taking a daily vitamin of it. You know, generally a dose of homeopathy or a dose of the pellets is only occasional, maybe a couple times a day for a couple of days in the row. And then you stop and wait because really it's a catalyst for your body to do its own healing. So it's, it's not a generally, in the most part, it's not a daily dosing. Mm -hmm. oh, it's interesting. Last night when I got home from work and I was checking in with one of our girls. I was like, how do you feel now? And she was like, oh, I can feel it moving through. I've had two doses of the remedy, right? Cause it's pushing everything through. And, and then on the other side, you know, is really feels so much better. Yeah, sometimes it needs to kind of bring those symptoms up in order for them to dissipate, right? Mm -hmm. You know, especially when you start like a constitutional, if you're having an right. acute illness, you know, that's one thing, and you might see some pretty dramatic responses right away. If you're working with constitutional, you know, we can get into what that means here in a moment, but sometimes you might have a 24 hours, 36 hours of being like, man, I kind of feel almost worse than I did before I took the remedy, but that's just, you know, bring everything up so it can move out. Mm -hmm. So, if you think about right now, why would someone choose this form of healthcare? Or are people mostly choosing it as like an adjunctive therapy? It can be both. I really like working with integrative medicine. You know, we don't have to be stuck in only one route. You know, we can collaborate and work together. But I think um, what we're seeing right now is that Hospitals and clinics are overwhelmed, um, under-resourced, and they don't really have the answers for what the symptoms are asking, you know, what the symptoms are coming for. Everyone's getting put on the same protocol. But when we're sick, we know that um, my cough, you know, lives up here in my upper chest, and it's really dry. But I'm going to be given the same protocol if I go to the hospital as somebody who has a, a really deep grungy, mucus-filled chest of cough in their chest. So um, so one reason to turn to homeopathy is that it's individualized. We're going to match that remedy, like I said before, whatever it is in nature that's creating those symptoms, we're going to match that to your symptoms. Also, um, homeopathy can be done 
at home. Everybody's staying home. You know, we mm -hmm. need to be taking care of ourselves in the home. So you don't have to go to the clinic. You don't have to go to the hospital. You can do so much at home just by having a kit, you know, having someone go to a wellness store for you to get the remedies. We can order them, send them directly to your mailbox. You don't even have to leave the house. So um, it's very family friendly and very homebound friendly as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's just another way of reminding people that healthcare is not a one size fits all conversation. <laughs> And, you know, like that may step on a few people's toes, but it doesn't work that way. Right. And that's why people get stuck in that cycle, that wheel of a lack of wellness and lack of vitality. Right. Is their yeah, you, care is not individualized. Right. Yeah, that's that's really a hard thing that we're seeing right now is that. Um, I mean, I think homeopathy can really step up and be. <clears throat> really at the forefront of what's happening right now. I've treated people both with symptoms and people who, you know, the diagnosis is important, but really what we're looking at is symptoms and how are your symptoms presenting? Is it a sore throat that's lasting for a full week? You know, is it um, woke up coughing in the middle of the night? Those are all individualized symptoms that lead to a different remedy. And so, um, so I've been really fortunate to be able to help quite a few people right now with those symptoms. So, yeah. Okay. So give me a second to grab this next thought. So in my line of work, we do not chase symptoms, get symptoms are telling a story. And so we stand back and test the body and trust the body to communicate what pathogen or toxicity is problem and then we reach for the antidote which may or may not include a homeopathic remedy you know a, a whole food supplement or something like that um now homeopathy is not a band-aid like when we think of talking into western medicine the symptom is treated versus the root cause so can you speak to how homeopathy is utilizing information from the symptoms to access root cause? Sure. Yeah, so again, with that example of a runny nose, so if you have a runny nose and you go to a allopathic or Western pharmacy, they wanna give you something to, that's gonna stop that runny nose and just to make it kind of like plug it back up not looking at the reason why it's running. Like, are you having a food allergy? Are you having an, um, a viral discharge, you know? So um, when, we, when homeopathy looks at symptoms, we wanna know like every detail about that runny nose. You might say, well, I have a runny nose, what is my remedy? Well, okay, first I need to know everything about that runny nose. Like, is it running on its own or is it only coming out when you blow your nose? Is there a color to it? Sometimes we ask, is there a taste? You know, it can taste salty or metallic. So really getting in tune with your body so you know how to, to match those symptoms with a remedy. You know, you can have a first aid kit at home and you can have first aid books at home and do a lot of this at home. And so, um, to, so you can understand well, if it tastes a little bit salty and it's kind of opaque and it's kind of um, just kind of free flowing, well, then that would be a remedy called Nature Muriaticum, which is made from salt, like table salt, sea salt, that kind of thing. So we love to look at symptoms. We could talk all day about symptoms, you know, and um, I have a great, uh, one of our instructors at school would always say, look for the three-legged stool something you know so you have something to balance on so you have mm -hmm. that runny nose but what else comes with it do you also have a headache with it or is there no headache do you have nasal dis you know post nasal drip so it's affecting your throat like let's you know really dig into other than just what's at the surface level let's really fully understand those symptoms mm -hmm. well and tell me what you're noticing right now in terms of like the emotional impact of a pandemic on people's health how is 
how is a typical person showing up now seeking homeopathy versus nine months ago? Right. Um, well, the interesting thing is last winter we had I had quite a few calls in Minnesota and elsewhere, people having this cold or these this illness that they said was like nothing they ever had before. Maybe they had already had some susceptibility to respiratory issues, but it was quite um, different than anything they'd had before. So I think that this current illness has been around for at least a year, right? I would um, agree. So, I thought all the same thing. Right. Yeah. We've been seeing that before it officially became known and mm -hmm. doing something about in March. But um, so as we're meeting with people again, now summer was a little bit less. And now as we're meeting with people again, what I'm seeing is that you have those physical symptoms. We also have the mental and emotional symptoms of there's some panic, there's some fear, whether that's, um, right. you know, I mean, I was going to say whether that was uh, necessary or not, that's not quite the right word, but whatever you're experiencing is what you're meant to be experiencing. So there's no judgment on it. There's no saying like, oh, you're afraid because you're watching mainstream media. No, that's, you know, you have a right to be afraid. You have your own freedom in feeling your feelings. But I want to address that too. So whether it, your symptoms are coming along with fear, whether they're coming along with anxiety, whether they're coming along with exhaustion, or just like, oh, I can't believe we still have to be doing this. No matter what side of the coin you're on, we can still help address that. Mm -hmm. I think that's gotta just sink in for people for a second because people wanna put themselves in a box. Yeah. Like if I don't fit here, that doesn't sound like it works, but I don't fit over here. So that's not for me. But then they make themselves kind of unreachable, you know, and untouchable to care. Right. Kind of like how we said. Sorry, am I having a um, a moment of? A no, it's a, it, there's a little delay. You're you're fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to agree with how we're talking about how it can be integrated. You don't have to be someone who only uses homeopathy. You don't have to be someone who right. only goes to Western medicine. You don't have, you know, life isn't like that. We, there's ebbs and flows and there's times where you need to go to the hospital and there's times where you can stay home and recuperate on your own. So I really think that that's the direction we need to be going with healthcare. I agree. I do agree with that. Now, I have two quick questions before we wrap up. For somebody who doesn't know homeopathy well, could you also take that alongside your prescription medications? Yes, you can. You can begin homeopathy at any time. Um, so homeopaths, most homeopaths are not medical doctors. We don't have to go through the same licensure. So we have a lot of knowledge, right? But we don't have the, we don't work with pharmaceuticals. So it's never the homeopath's place to come in between you and your medicine, right? But as you begin to strengthen, as you become less susceptible to illnesses, to emotional upset, to anything that's going on in your life, you may have that conversation with your doctor Maybe I don't need to be taking my cholesterol medicine as frequently as I do. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can look at reducing my um, anti-anxiety medication, right? Because you're feeling stronger in yourself. Those little triggers aren't bothering you as much anymore. And so you can continue to do both until you find that you don't need that um, pharmaceutical as much or at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fantastic. That's comforting for people who are new to this world. Yes. Um, and now that I'm looking at my last question, I realize I think you answered this already when my question is, you know, what is the most common symptom people are coming around with right now? And and I think I heard you say earlier, a cough, sniffle. 
Would you say that what we started to see last year at this time uh, has shifted a little bit? Like how is what you're seeing now a bit different than then? Um, I think I'm seeing now people coming a little sooner. You know, maybe their symptoms are starting a little more mild and they want to get a hold on them right away as opposed to waiting, you know, a week or so and then saying, oh, shoot, maybe I should do something about this, right? Whereas before, because of what's in the forefront of our healthcare, you know, our health system right now. and um, But also, you know, sometimes it's that time of year. People are indoors more often, have a little less vitamin D. So we're going to see those sniffles. We're going to see those coughs and belly aches. And we just, you know, be prepared that not everything is the part of the pandemic, that we do need to get sick and exercise our immune system and recover. So, um, well, this is November is always a month for the Kiki family cold. <laughs> what our family does every November. Uh, last year, I think it included both the dog and the cat and the nanny. Um, do you remember those phone calls? I think I had you on. Dial. <laughs> right. I do remember the dog. Yes. <laughs> Mine too. Oh so um, we all made it out so fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I also think just knowing and understanding and recognizing what your own rhythms and routines are with your health and, and how your family moves through things and, and then individually looking at how your family members move through things. It's right. a different insight and perspective to have on your health, I think, when you are starting to look from the inside out. Yeah, yeah, to be so curious about it, you know, retain a little bit of that curiosity and say, why do I get sick in November? Uh, Why do I feel run down in January? Is Mm -hmm. it, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever the reasons might be, just to have that level of curiosity towards yourself and turn inwards a little bit you'll see a whole host of understanding after doing mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we need to wrap up. If you've got questions for Sarah in regards to homeopathy, feel free to leave a comment below. And Sarah, maybe leave a link for where they can get a hold of you and the rest of your team or support if you're interested in that. Um, and then we'll share this, uh, share this interview on our other social media channels as well but thanks so much for joining us today yeah thanks for asking me and um i always love to talk homeopathy whether it's um with you know i could talk about it with anybody so just it's a matter of what level we're trying to understand it yet because i still have a lot to learn too so we can go through that together so beautiful all right thanks here all right bye